All right, so today we're going to talk about what is communication. No, that's not right. We're going to talk about communication and how can it affect your marriage and parenting styles. No, it's still not right. All right, if you can't tell right now, I'm picking up very poorly on some nonverbal communication <laughs> from my wife. We're going to figure this thing out. We want to make sure the sound is uh, the audio is working well. We said a little prayer, and it seems to be operating pretty clearly. So I'm looking around, and I think we're ready to get started. Communication is a two-way street. You have to stop to listen. You heard it here. <laughs> two-way street. Don't drive the wrong way. we thought we'd share a little nugget of wisdom on communication since I keep seeing things in my timeline I don't know about you and your timeline everyone's fighting over political things and I don't know I don't feel like what are you talking about I'm sorry you said in your timeline I know we're talking about communication today by the way (laughs) I'm Stephen Hayes is my wife Lauren Hayes today we're gonna be talking to you about communication and she just said something about a timeline <laughs> and there's there's our first breakdown of communication. I don't know what she's talking about in the timeline. Like you mean like in a goal timeline? No, like no, it doesn't... no, on the Facebook timeline. <laughs> so... I had no idea we were even on Facebook. You're so okay. Cool. <laughs> I had no idea. Okay. Um, so there you go. This is communication. Uh, one person talking to another person, uh, sharing ideas, thoughts, um, you know, values beliefs so you know this that's that just happened that was that was raw excuse me that was raw and uncut for y'all this was a communication breakdown we just had um but that's why we wanted to talk about communication please you you were saying oh i was just saying that no one seems to listen to each other these days i mean maybe all the days i don't know okay people at least family and friends like have different ideas but they don't do the listening part. It just seems to be a lot of people yelling at each other. And I thought that kind of happens too, maybe in relationships, even with kids and just communication. Yeah, now before we start recording, like you even mentioned like the divorce rate being higher. Yeah. So was it 50% of all marriages in divorce in the United States? Yes. Yeah. 50%. And one of the main causes is just, well, there's finances and then communication usually. Finances and communication. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we're going to be doing a video later on where we talk about finances and some of the tools that we found that's helped us with our finances. But since we're talking about communication, the second, you know, one of the, one of the other reasons for a high divorce rate here in the U S that's why we're doing this video. Uh, We wanted to make sure that we give you guys some of the things that that have helped us in our marriage. Um, And we're using our marriage as the model. Um, Not that we're perfect, but um, it's, it's raw, it's real. Um, so it, the imperfections kind of uh, help to show you that, you know, even in our flaws, we can learn from each other, um, both the things that we do well and the things that we found out that just don't work. Just um, relatable, I think. Yeah, that's relatable. the idea. Raw and no, uncut. That's it, that's why I kept using that, raw and uncut, you know. Um, so, you know, this is a, you know, this is our time with you guys and we hope you enjoy what we have to share with you. Um, you know, we talked about a little about about what communication is already. Um, you know, kind of informal introduction to communication. It's basically just you know sharing uh, things with another person. So from me to you, what we're doing right now is we're communicating with you through this uh, video feed. So if you're watching this, this is communication. Um, we're using both verbal and nonverbal. I talk with my hands, as you can see, they're going all over the place when I talk. <laughs> um, kind of keeps your attention, maybe. Maybe. But, you're uh, right. It's, it's just Italian. there we go i'm south italian you know no <laughs> so um yeah it just kind of helps you you know see there i go with my hands again it kind of helps us just you know uh relay a message whether it be verbal or non-verbal because of course those are two ways to communicate um both verbally uh, whether it be oral written um through video feeds something like this or you know of course Nonverbal would be the gestures you see me doing. Like your glasses. Yeah, my glasses. That would be a nonverbal cue. The kind of clothes I'm wearing. I'm wearing a message on my shirt. Nonverbal. Yeah. I'm not stating anything, but it actually says something about um, my beliefs and what I, you know, what I, I believe in or what I think about. It's advertising. Yeah, my glasses. They're kind of a barrier to communication. They can be a barrier to communication. My wife asks me quite often, um, especially. Take off when, your glasses. Yeah, when we have a serious conversation, 
Um, you need to see your eyes. I need to see your eyes. You Could you take those glasses off? Yeah, really. That's what I was telling her <laughs> earlier. You know, the eyes are a window to the soul. So it's like, you know, by wearing the shades, uh, typically what happens is she's like, I can't see into the windows of your soul. Um, but uh, it, it does create a barrier. And it, it also makes an, a nonverbal statement because um, some people may be intimidated or, uh, or put off by seeing me wearing shades indoors because why? they don't realize that there's a reason why I wear them. So yeah, maybe you should tell them why you're wearing glasses. Exactly. So communication. Thank you. That, that's, that would be a good idea. So this is a med, you know, because of medical condition, uh, I have a traumatic brain injury, a TBI. Um, and so what happens is I've become sensitive uh, to light. And so what happens is I, I, I tend to get uh, frequent headaches. Um, I do also already get migraines and things like that from, from previous injuries. So, you know, I use the glasses as a filter for the light and it actually has reduced the amount of times I get headaches um, and can, can keep some headaches from getting even more intense. So that's one of the reasons why I wear the shades indoors. And also to, to get away with things like with your cane so people can think that you're blind. Don't listen to that. <laughs> Um, it is possible that when people <laughs> see me out in public with a cane um, from my back and my knees, I have a walking cane, but it is possible that when people see me with my walking cane and shades on indoors that they believe that I am blind. I'm not actually blind. Treatment. I don't ask for better treatment. I like to do stuff on my own. Um, just kidding, I'm just but it is possible that, again, we're talking about communication, and these are um, a combination of some verbal, most of the things we're talking about right now are nonverbal things that happen. You know, the way I dress, um, you know, the, 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 uh, of course, the devices like the eyewear, the cane, those things portray a message. Um, most of the people will look at their background and the way they communi learned communicating from when they were a child. So how do they learn to communicate by watching others? They'll take that and say, okay, well, whenever I saw a person with a cane or a walking stick, and you know dark shades they were blind so they would assume oh this guy must be blind and then they sit me see me get behind the driver's side um part of a car and start driving away <laughs> a little bit frightened it's and, a little bit, it's a little bit scary <laughs> and either they're scared or they think the whole thing's a sham he's faking the whole thing you know he's just trying to get some sympathy he's just trying to get a discount let's focus we, I thought we were focused we're communicating that's um, what this is so what do you think to people going back and forth? What, how are they having good communication? Because it seems like you're doing a lot of talking. See, there we listening. go. But, well, <laughs> let me interject. This is some so. good communication right here. So um, being able to know when to stop talking so that you can listen to the other person that is talking. Active listening. So what I hear you saying is you stop so you can listen to me. Exactly. That's an active listening. So, yeah, active yeah. listening. We learned that in, I don't know, I feel like we learned that in couples communication. Couple, we did uh, premarital counseling. Yeah. Talked about active communication. Um, some post-marital counseling. Talked about active communication. Well, it's like 20 um, years ago. During my, my time as a <laughs> chaplain assistant in the Army, we taught, um, we taught families and marriages. We did marriage retreats, and we taught about act, you know active listening as part of communication. So... That kind of gives you some of the background where we come from. My wife has more of a psychology background for her education. So, what do you think? It, so, what would you tell them? Is, you think is the, the takeaway for okay. communicating? So, the, the key to communication when you're using, especially like using an active listening skill, the key is to make sure that you take turns. You know, we, we're always telling the kids, you know, make sure you take turns. You're sharing. You take turns. Um, one way of doing that is we had a little device, there's a little magnet goes on the fridge <laughs> for active listening to remind you some of the rules of um, having fair fighting, if you will, you know, fair fighting. The speaker has a floor and when you have the, the magnet or whatever. We don't really practice that very well, though. We don't, we don't, we don't it. use it anymore. We don't use the magnet. Don't use the magnet. <laughs> I say we practice it, but we don't use the magnet. I know. And so and it's not you're right it's not perfect we don't we're not always doing it and that's the whole purpose of the video is like it's so, it's not you're not going to get perfection um you know so, especially not out of us we're not perfect but we're going to share you the the nuggets that we've gotten i think it's important to have the other person um let them know that you're listening by either eye contact or the act of listening shows you're listening but if you're doing something else like scrolling on your phone which i'm guilty of sometimes <laughs> instead of fully listening then it's not Fully listening. It's I agree. Listening. I agree. 
Now, I've been guilty of it, too. Um, either on my phone, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm, you know, creating a song on my phone or, you know, playing a video game, um, watching TV. I mean, there's, there's things that I've been doing, heck, doing, trying, trying to do something um, to help out around the house or on our vehicles. So, oh, I was yeah. going to say, another, yeah. another barrier could be, like, um, just a difference in cultures. Yeah. Like, take us, for example. You thought I was going to say white and black. Well, we are, but I was actually going to say <laughs> from the north and south. Yeah, the cultural difference <laughs> isn't just because of the skin color, okay? Yes. Remember in Alaska when I said, let's order some pie? Yeah, okay. So to paint the scene for you, give you a little background and information. So my wife, like she said, she's from New York. Uh, I spent most of my time growing up uh, into my adult years in Texas, so from the south. Um, and we, we we met in Alaska, so we're trying to order pizzas. A bunch of us soldiers getting together, a bunch of single soldiers. We're all getting together. We want to order some pizza because we're hungry. Now, I hear her in the background over and over as I'm trying to ask everybody what they want on their pizza. <laughs> order a cheese pie. She kept saying to order a cheese pie. Now, where I come from, a pie is a dessert unless it's a pot pie. You have chicken pot pie, you know, the beef <laughs> pot pie, a pot pie. I get it. That's a savory item that you can consume, but savory item. That's right. Consume. No, that's right. I'm, I'm no, pulling out the big know. words. That's right. I hope y'all paying attention. You might need a thesaurus when word. I'm done. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, I was gonna mess with him and say thesaurus. Oh no. Yeah, emphasis well, on anyway, the wrong. There we go. So, Back on task. <laughs> go ahead. You gonna take so over the story? I kept telling him because he wasn't listening to me. He was not. Yeah. And I kept saying, just order a cheese pie. Everyone likes that. And he was like, no, that's nasty. Who's going to order a cheese pie? And I couldn't understand why he didn't understand what I was saying. Um, because in New York, and I'm from an Italian family, but I think all New Yorkers, you could just order a pie. It means pizza. A pizza pie. So you could just say, order a cheese pie or pepperoni pie. And he was like... No, <laughs> I'm not ordering that. a cheese pie. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. <laughs> Who in the world eats a cheese pie? Look, we're hungry. We don't want dessert yet. We want food. I'm going to order some pizza. What would you like on yours? So sometimes I think it can be a regional thing. Like even yeah. in the United States, like I like said, North and South, or just different countries have different ways of communicating. Yeah, and like you say, culture. You yeah. know, it's a cultural difference. Like you know? it's, it can be insulting to like wave your left hand at someone like in, a diff in some different countries, like in yeah. the Middle East. Or to show the soles of your feet. Some so cultures have that as an insult. So it's, again, we're talking those are some of the nonverbal yeah. um, differences, communication differences. So, but the takeaways. I say active listening is definitely a skill to practice and um, and do your best at. I'm not going to say perfect because you may not perfect it, but the idea is to to use it. Um, um, it can be reused in all relationships. Yes, I want to say listening actually listening and um not thinking about what you're going to say next but listening to the person giving them a chance and then you can speak yeah so i think if you take a few seconds to hear what the person's saying you might actually realize either you're talking about the same thing or basically you, you can realize something that you may not have realized had you been yeah. thinking about your you know your comeback your follow-up i also think a good rule for online which is, might be kind of off off base i don't know is if you're not would not say it to the person's face don't say it online yeah i think that kind of goes down to some <laughs> some personal morals and that's anyway. that's something that we have yeah some morals everyone has their own if you want to say it to their face <laughs> don't put it out online anyway you know everybody feels real brave when they're behind a keyboard not mm -hmm. so much when that person's confronting them about what they've stayed you know written on online so you can't really take that down either yes. it's always somewhere on somebody's hard drive or you know the cloud you're going down the rabbit trail but so we hope you have a great day and that you learned how to communicate something got a tip from this or something yeah i think i hogged at least all you gotta laugh if nothing else i laughed on the inside oh my goodness bye <laughs>